Now let's jump into a little Q&A as me and CTO Larson answer all your burning questions to the best of our abilities right now. All right. So let's see. I started a couple. Tommy, shout out to the beautiful people in the Dan fam. The ones that have all the wrenches. That's the truth. Thanks, everybody. And if you're here now, you don't have to have a wrench. I'll just start giving them out later again. Is this the beginning? It has begun over six months now. Where have you been? That's a good one. Yeah, it seems like <laughs> we think that, you know, we, some people would say, I remember there was a lot of harshness when people started to say this is a bear market out of the bull market, but it was the truth. I mean, I remember saying this a while ago and people were like, no, no, it can still happen. We can still rebound. I'm like, I don't see it. The macro doesn't, doesn't tell that story. Okay, CTO, here's one. 18.3. K. Do you see that happening anytime soon below 18K? Or do you think that we'll hit these levels of support like you were talking about for the seventh time and just bounce up? What do you think? It can absolutely happen because uh, there is this um, tactic. When we're looking at this chart, the big mm -hmm. moves are driven by the macroeconomics right now. But yeah. there is room to manipulate the price. There's some very rich people and they have enough money to actually drive the price of Bitcoin, thousand dollars down, thousand dollars up and so on. And a tactic that they often deploy is mm -hmm. called to run the stops. That means that you try to guess if people are long or they have bought spot, mm -hmm. uh, where will they have the stop loss? Meaning where will they uh, step out of the game? And if you look at the chart, where would you put it? If you think that this is the support, I'm uh -huh. not the only person who can figure this out. Everyone can figure this out. So here is the stop. Here is the, the support level at 18,600. If, if that doesn't hold, you want to sell maybe. So say you put the stop loss a little bit below, 18,300, 200 maybe, or you mm -hmm. put it even down here at 17,500. Then it's really over. Then you pack up and go home. So you put the stop loss here. Then yeah. a tactic would be to push the price down thousand dollars in five minutes and then all those stop losses are going to hit people will sell they will close their longs and uh, then they create liquidity they buy there and they run the price back up and then they've cleared all the stop losses everyone have you know got uh, screwed and uh, they <laughs> yeah. walked away with some money and uh, if they have enough money to run the price like that they can definitely do it so i think that that can happen for sure uh, it's possible I don't know if it will happen uh, unless you are that person or it's your you know, uncle. You don't know if that will happen, it's, uh, but it can definitely do that. So it's, you know, that's a tactic. You can put in some buy orders there. If they hit, they hit. If they don't hit, okay, then they don't hit. They don't, they don't. And then, of course, you, you have some buy orders there and it goes down lower, which is, you know, yeah. it happens. And that's okay because the thing is, is like, I was always thinking about this and people like, well, Rob, because I had a, a the strategy I had was I just waited for the Fed to come out and say, this is what we're going to do as far as the rates. As soon as they would say that the rates were higher and everybody was, most people were wrong. They're actually much higher than what the, we thought it was or a little bit higher. And everybody said it was priced in, which it kind of was, but you would see a dip in the market. I just waited, you know, and I would buy Bitcoin at like 22K or 25K, whatever yeah. else it is. And they're like, well, don't you feel kind of goofy now? Because, you know, as time's going on, it's going to, it might go to 13K or 12K. I'm like, that's not... For me, it's, it's not so much the point. I will never time the absolute bottom. I will never yeah. time the absolute top. Even Baron Rothschild, one of the richest families in the entire planet, has said this. I made all my money by not buying the top or by not near buying the top and never selling near, near the bottom because I'll never do it. And those are from like the richest people in the world. So what are you yeah. going to do? I think so too. I mean, if can avoid giving up, if can just avoid giving up, mm -hmm. it's going to be fine. If can avoid that, you know, hold all the way from 65, say that we go to, I don't know, 10K. Let's imagine we go to 10K. What a lot of people will do is that they will hold all the way from 65K down to 10K. Then it's flat there and it feels like this is over, guys. I should, you know, sell the little mm -hmm. I have left and walk home. And at least uh, I won't feel bad about it anymore. You know, I cut my emotional pain, if nothing else. Then they will sell and go home. And it will run all the way back up again. That, that is what's going to happen. I can guarantee it. And I don't know if it will be at 10K. I don't know if it, this is the bottom or if it will be at you know, some other level. 
but that behavior will probably happen. And if we can just avoid that, just avoid not giving up, but instead try to maneuver whatever is thrown at us. We try to, we try to do something reasonable. You know, we try to plan for the next Fed meeting and maybe buy lower if it goes lower, or you know, take some action and stay in the game. Yeah, it's going to be fine. Well, yeah, stay in the game. Well, I mean, that would be like like this one. There was this this article about the ten biggest days. And not that I'm telling you to stay in forever, everybody. Remember, we are not financial analysts. We can't give you financial advice. Uh, this is just uh, what we do personally. But this was from CNBC. Chart below shows how ten thousand dollars of S and S and P 500, and just as S and S P for 20 year periods between 99 and 2018, would have performed. If you fully invested it and just waited, the average annual return is 5.6. If you missed the 10 best days, it goes down to two. If you miss the 20 best days, you get down 0.3, 30 days, 2.4, 4.2, and so on and so forth. So in a lot of the ways, it would behoove you just to stick around for a bit. But again, it's important to also, at some point, you got to sell. And that's really what Absolutely. it comes down to. Absolutely. That's what makes you it need to manage the money somehow. You need to manage the total portfolio. So yeah. you have something to act with if it goes further. We don't know, right? You and me and everyone else in the world, we don't know. If we knew what the price would go or if it would be obvious what would happen it would already yeah. be priced in so it's not obvious so but if it goes down by another 50 percent need to have some room to act to do something and yeah. not get paralyzed that that is key that is key here's a good question jupiter mojo uh wyckoff and accumulation and fibonacci folks are saying 8500 bucks i'm gonna guess this is for bitcoin do you see this in any way, shape, or form a possibility? I mean, everything is a possibility, right? But what's the probability, I guess, would be? I, I think that very low prices are definitely possible. A uh, key in crypto markets is to open your mind to a much wider range of possibility than seems reasonable. On both the way up, a lot of people sell too early. They actually catch the yeah. winner. Uh, then it goes up 20% and they feel I should sell now before the profits slip away. And then it goes another 100x or something. <laughs> uh, and, and the same way down, it seems impossible. If we just think back until end of last year, it would seem impossible that we sit here and it's at uh, you know, 19,000. It would seem unimaginable. Mm -hmm. and, but So a key is to kind of open yourself for the possibility. Could it go to 8,500? Yes, absolutely. Sure. Could yeah. it go below 5K? Of course. I mean, it was it was below 5K, well, what is it, two years ago. In um, March 2020, we were at what was actually the lowest point. It was very hard to catch the bottom there. But mm -hmm. we hit the low of uh, 3,856. Oh. Uh, that said, uh, what, two and a half years ago? 3,586. So, yeah. Uh, of course, it's possible that we could hit 8,500. I think it's it's key to kind of open your mind to all the possibilities. What's yeah. the probability? I have no idea. Do I think it will happen? I try not to. I can speculate about it, but I don't try to impose my opinion about, on the market because it's usually unsuccessful. It's better <laughs> to just you know have a have a ability to rea react. If it happens, I'm gonna probably make even more money than if it doesn't happen because I'm going to get in lower. And I think eventually the crypto industry with Bitcoin and Ethereum and many of the other coins, they're going to mm -hmm. succeed. So the lower, the better, in my opinion. Yeah, I think so. It's going to take some time, but we'll be there. And this one uh, ba -ba -ba, from Tommy, uh, digital me. Are you very concerned about potential mining bans? Uh, no. And this is th there's a story that we did a couple of days ago. Biden administration had put out. There was a, uh, a report that said that we're taking a look at, at proof of work. And if it becomes unsustainable and it really damages the uh, electrical power grid, too much stress, we got to think about banning essentially proof of work, which is essentially Bitcoin. And I said, I said back then, uh, I said, it doesn't, here's what's going to happen. 
Bitcoin miners are going to figure it out. They're going to say, you know what? We don't want to give up this $500 billion industry because we think it's going to be eight or $10 trillion in the future. So if they don't like us using so much electricity, we'll do the ESG compliance, which I don't think that really big corporations even care about, but they just say they do. And we'll figure out a way to use renewable energy. And so much the better because there was this report that just came out a couple of days ago solar powered crypto farm in Australia to prove Bitcoin mining can be green. This was just two days ago. And they talk about how in Australia they're using uh, solar power. And they're able to, this is just a test case. They're able to do 200 or excuse me, 100 Bitcoin annually, but they're going to scale up. And I just thought to myself, well, that makes a lot of sense. All they're going to do is just go like this. Look, if you don't want us to, you know, if you want us to be ESG compliant, we'll install uh, wind turbines, will install the solar panels, will use uh, vapor f uh, flare or gas flares, uh, which is uh, environmentally detrimental, and we'll use those into the Bitcoin mining process. And oh, by the way, in Texas, we'll just shut off the Bitcoin mining rigs when there's a, a strain on the electrical grid. So I don't really have a fear about the Bitcoin mining ban. I think they'll figure it out, especially since there's so much money. All right. I think so too. And to add one no. thing, which is yeah. very key with the whole uh, proof. I mean, I, I support... I think uh, Ethereum made a good move with proof of stake and so on, yeah. but I, I, I'm sure. not against proof of work because <laughs> there is one thing that is so key and a lot of people haven't understood. It's not so easy to move electricity around. You can mm. do it. You can build cables and you can move electricity from A to B, but it's difficult, it's expensive yeah. and so on. Just because there's a lot of uh, volcanic uh, energy, geothermal energy I in am. Iceland, that doesn't help Puerto Rico uh, right mm. now if there's a power outage or if you have a lot of renewable energy in one place you can't immediately get it to the other place and uh, while most of electricity consumption is very local it needs to mm. it happen at a certain place but bitcoin mining is, is not it's not sensitive to the latency right you could put bitcoin mining on the moon or something if you, uh, you know uh, you could put it anywhere and mm. it will work as well. You don't need to put it exactly where the people are or exactly where the power generation is. So you can just move it around. You can move it where there is excess uh, Excessive, electricity yeah, production. And because you can anyway not transport that energy uh, somewhere else. Hey, so, and also CTO had a really good video about how everybody gets it wrong as far as electrical consumption. So if you just, if you just search CTO Larson electricity, you'll see this video come up and he went over a bunch of different graphs. It's really good. There was a question that I had when you were doing that. Um, I know you were talked about, you know, nuclear and solar, but a lot of places, it's all fossil fuels. That's just how oh, it goes yeah. until we transition over. Geothermal, do you, in Sweden, do, was there, I didn't remember, do you guys talk about that, use that or do anything like that? And the reason I asked is because in Texas, there's a couple of different uh, communities that new developers are using geothermal energy. They, they dig oh, down. It's a, it's a huge thing, yeah. actually. I didn't talk about it in that video. I felt it got too long anyway. But absolutely, mm -hmm. most of, uh, I think, yeah, I think most villas in, say, Stockholm area, mm. they have a deep hole under the house, down into the ground. Really? And then you can send down water and it comes up a few degrees uh, mm. warmer. Yeah. And then you can use that uh, differential to actually create uh, heat and heat up the house. It's amazing, but it actually works. And it's used a lot. Mm. So there's a lot of rules that, you know, you cannot drill too many holes at the same place. And there's authorities coordinating this in the villa areas and yeah. so on. And it, it, uh, it cuts electricity. It cuts heat, heating cost by uh, more than 50%. Gotcha. Hey, that's pretty good. See, there's 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 opportunities and there's answers all around. Just actually implementing uh, those processes. How about this one? This is for both of us. Actually, I'm gonna start with you, Lars. What where do you trade on as far as for your preferred exchange? Yeah, it's uh, what I do for my like personal investment is probably not applicable for everyone else because we have a special uh, tax construction in Sweden called ISK. And uh, then you cannot buy the crypto directly, but you can buy a price tracking certificate. It's like, uh, uh, not exactly like an ETF, but it's an exchange traded product. Okay. And we've had it actually in Sweden since 2015. And then if you buy that Bitcoin or Ethereum tr price tracking certificate and you have it within that tax construction, mm -hmm. you don't pay capital gains tax. You pay instead a, a percentage of tax on the entire amount. 
Oh, I see. Very volatile see. assets, which you know yeah. they can go up a lot and then they can go down a lot. That comes out favorably. Also, it is more transparent, uh, so there's there's less work to report the trading and everything because it's handled by the old uh, old traditional system and reported automatically and don't need to do anything. So yeah. that's actually my preferred way. There mm -hmm. are major downsides with it. Uh, for example, it's closed on the weekend and so on. Mm. And so forth. But that's what I use. But I think that's that answer isn't applicable to, <laughs> to, most. to most people. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think uh, the two companies here are probably the, the right question. I, they seem to be very stable. Binance clearly has, I think, benefited from the from the washout that has been. Oh yeah, they they are I read some interview that many of the companies in trouble. They go to Binance first, or they go to FTX to try mm -hmm. to get help. So I think that these two companies they will move forward these, their positions. They will buy a lot of good companies on the cheap here and uh, come out even stronger into the next. Uh, bull run that I am. Um, mm -hmm. I can guarantee there will be another bull run. Uh, we will continue going up and down as long as this exists. It's always it's. There's always a bull run. There's yeah, always a, exactly. Yeah, bear runs don't last forever, and sure, we know that bull runs don't last forever. And then yeah. to answer to answer this question for me, because I'm, I'm American, uh, this is really what it comes down to. First of all, just so you know, there's a great website called Nomics.com, and you look at exchanges, you can see the top as far as volume percentage wise and Binance crushes everybody volume in the last 24 hours 78 billion OKX 20 billion Coinbase exchange I don't know it's why it's here 1.8 Bybit 12 FTX 11 so on and so forth so for me personally this is all the ones that I use cuz I'm in Texas right now so I can't use Binance I can't use Binance US I use FTX I use Coinbase I use Coin or KuCoin and where did it, oh, for some reason this is gone, but also uh, Kraken. I don't know why this isn't here. I had to fix that. But uh, those are the ones that I use. And then there's also some DEXs. I use the, the Uniswap and Simple Swap when there's things that I just cannot get my dirty hands on. And uh, we just got to go from there. So, all right. That takes care of that. Uh, and then to, there was a question about the Voyager acquisition or the Voyager auction. It's going on right now. Uh, New York offices. And I think this is day five. So if I had to put my money on it, it would probably be the two that are in the lead, Binance and FTX, just like what CTO was saying. They've got the deep pockets, so we'll see. Anyhow. And I think we're coming up to the end. Not too many questions. I don't know that one. I don't know what Suka is. I don't even know what that project is. Looks like it's probably the last day. Simon Dixon. We'll talk about that later. That'll be in the tomorrow's video. Ah, the, the told you so. Told you about Loop Network. Flying the last days. Everybody tells me something. Do you miss this? Look, I don't know how you feel, Larson, but I'm going to miss a lot more opportunities that I'm actually going to get into. That's just how it oh, is. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think a good analogy is to think like a surfer, right? You don't need to surf all the waves in the ocean. Ah, uh, that's a good one. Right? But that. if you're on the wave, speaking of selling that you talked about before, like if you're on the wave and the wave is moving you straight into the mountain, you better get, <laughs> you have to get off that wave. Uh, it's different when you enter, when you buy, right? You don't have to buy all the opportunities. There's no need. Like yeah. uh, people laugh at Warren Buffett for not, you know, buying Bitcoin or anything, but he, he don't. You don't need to buy all the good opportunities. He understands that he doesn't understand it. So he's not going to you know, play that, that side. He's going to you know, do something else. So you, mm -hmm. it's fine to miss 99% uh, of all great opportunities. You just need to get a few ones. But if you're on it and it starts going bad, you cannot think the same way. You have to get off and uh, you know, save yourself. Save the money. Protect save the, the money. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the last two, and then we'll finish up. I mean... Look, Laura, what time is it over there? 7 p.m., 8 p.m.? 8.30. Uh, yeah, this guy's got to get back to his kids and his wife. So the last two questions, CTLR, some thoughts on L2 scaling solutions like Immutable X and Optimism. Do you deal with those? I don't really deal oh, with Oh, yeah, them. it's a giant, uh, giant topic. I, I do think that there are benefits. I mean, if I, I back up one, one step. Mm. 
Ethereum scaling isn't going to work if we don't get layer two working. It's, it's right. not going to be enough. Even with shorting and everything, it's not going to be enough mm -hmm. if we imagine that this ecosystem becomes used by not only you and me and a couple mm -hmm. of people here around. If we're thinking about billions of people using it, it's not going to work if we don't get uh, layer two working. So it has to, it has to work out for mm -hmm. at least that technology to work. And then, of course, there are other... Uh, blockchains that take another route and saying we're just going to build the fastest best L1 instead and that that will scale. So this will really be the battle. It's not it's not really about which layer one is the best. It will be I think will layer two work out or will there be like the best layer one that will work over here. But that is perhaps uh, a too big topic for <laughs> for the last five minutes. I think it's a very very good yeah. question. Yeah. And my thoughts on it is a lot. I, I like the innovation. I think it's a great technology. I also see uh, challenges, uh, the complexity being being maybe the biggest one. Of them. Yeah. Complexity. Yeah, we'll see who wins. Look, that's what the bear market's for. Let them fight I it out. I want to say one more thing because, Rob, huh. you have done so many great videos and I learned so much Thanks. from them. I just not, took a note of one that you said. You talked about financial education for kids in yes. the previous yes. video and how how bad the advice was in, in the video. And it's, yeah. I thought it was the same advice as when I went to school. And it mm. was so bad advice. And I'm thinking, imagine if mm. someone who actually knew something about money or investing had just come for 30 minutes, one time, and you know, said something, whatever methodology, didn't, doesn't really matter, just knew something it would have done, it would have changed everything for all those kids. Now, I mean, I discovered mm -hmm. it much later in life when I was, you know, over 30. And, uh, you know, imagine if we could oh, just go back. teach a little bit to the kids and the edu because the education in the schools, at least based on what you showed there, it's exactly mm -hmm. as bad as it was when I went to school uh, 2000 years ago in <laughs> <laughs> No, it's the same, man. It's never, I don't think it's going to change. I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of education out there. It just, will they get pushed into it? Because the kids in today's school, like I went to Ozanen, the only financial education I got was how to write a check. Me and West Coast Crypto had the same thing. Here's how you write a check. And here's what you do as far as a bank. You deposit your money and you wait 50 years. And then hopefully it's enough for your 0.003% yeah, interest rate. So yeah, it's the same thing. Uh, and then to finish this up, so we can get out of here. Uh, this is Robbie seen Simon Dixon's video. Today. He was he's talking about going quite lower, and you're gonna so you're gonna see a lot more videos about that today. People are gonna talk about going to 13k, eight and a half k, whatever else. I don't know. And then of course there's this one, the Mount Gox Bitcoin soon to flood the market, 12k possibly. I'll hand this over to Larson, but I've been hearing about Mount Gox since I got in 2017, and we still haven't seen any distribution of that yet. I know we're getting close. Who knows that's gonna happen, or who knows what it's gonna do? I know it's gonna be a there's three options. You can have Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, or Cash. Mm -hmm. But for that one, Larson, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think that has some merit. I, if I, you know, mm -hmm. gun to my head, I have to predict what will happen. I would also guess, I mean, the trend is down. So the odds are that it continues down because trends, at each point of time, the trend have more higher chance to continue than to, to reverse. So yeah, probably it goes down. But I think key here is to realize that Today isn't the day to sell. You know, if, if using one methodology, it was half a year ago. And mm -hmm. if you see another methodology, uh, today would be the day to gamble on a reversal or something like that. Uh, so even if, I, yeah, I do think that uh, there's good chances we go much lower. In fact, I hope for that because yeah, trend it bounce, I hope we go even lower and then reverses from there. Then I get even better entries. But it's very difficult to predict the market if everyone agreed that we're going to go, that it's going to be 13K. Okay, then price would be 13K today, and it's not. So clearly, there are big players who don't think that. Uh, no. But I, no. I, I, I do think that if I, have to, if I had to guess, tre trend is down, so over, yeah, probably we go lower. But I don't really use that belief mindset as yeah. input to my trading i will just follow what actually happens instead that is higher it's easier to 
observe the present and to predict the future, if I put it like that. Yeah, and I got with, with, with our, I'm not a big uh, TA guy, but I just take a look at uh, the macro conversation. The optics don't look too good right now. I don't no. see what I don't see where the narrative could actually push us farther. I think we will go down further. I think there could be little mini rallies, you know, yeah. bear market rallies. That's fine, but I think in the long term uh, we're going to see some more pain. And yeah. uh, unfortunately, I hate people. I'm people hate when I say this, but I'm kind of hoping for that because yeah. I know that for these rainy days, there's going to be sunshine, and those are called the bull markets. Exactly, and I mean you mentioned the electricity. For example, here in Europe, uh, electricity prices are going up. Uh, uh, and um, there's a narrative and then there's a reality. I covered that in that video. But fact is that they're going up and they're going up a lot. And what will happen then is that a lot of uh, companies which don't have the benefit of using digital only technology as we are doing, they will yeah. go from profitable to bankrupt. That's what's going to happen because their whole, maybe they're operating at 10% profit margin and now it will go to minus 10%. And then mm. they don't have money. They're going to go bankrupt. And that will add on to all the other problems that's already in the economy. And uh, there's no easy fix for this electricity thing because the real problem is that they switched off the old systems before building the new ones. And that's not easily resolved. So I think there are these real problems that are, are actually real. That's not just policy. But who knows what happens? The politicians want to win the election, so maybe they will go on, you know, Pump the markets, sell out the futures, pump the market, get us over the next election, and uh, then let someone else worry about it. But I don't know. But whatever. Here's a yeah. Here's a stimulus check right before, <laughs> right before you can vote. All right, everybody. So look, I want to say thanks again to CTO Larson for stopping by. Always a pleasure, CTO. You're always welcome on. And again, you can find the link to his video on his uh, YouTube channel. Links in the description. You can check that out. But that is it for today. So everybody, thanks for stopping by. We both appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Thank you.